Sheila, we're here today at the Dublinia Heritage Centre and much to my shame, I've never been here before. It's a fascinating place and very visual. That's what everybody says to us and I think we're really known for that kind of visual aspect of history. We're colourful, we're multi-sensory, we're, we're tangible. So people get to really get hands-on with history and that's what we're all about. Tell us about the Dublinia exhibition. What can you see here? There's three exhibitions on three different floors. We're a lot bigger inside than people realise from our building outside. So there's Viking Dublin exhibition, there's Medieval Dublin exhibition and my personal favourite, if I'm to be biased, is History Hunters on the third floor. There's an awful lot of stats on screen and mock-ups of how life would have been back then. Where do you find the artefacts that you have upstairs? Well, we have a wonderful relationship with city archaeologists, but also the National Museum of Ireland. And it's a, an honour to be able to exhibit some of Dublin's most treasured archaeological finds, especially those from the famous Woodkey excavation, because Dublin is one of the most important settlements of our Viking history and our Viking heritage. So there's a bit of Viking in all of us. Frank, delighted to meet a real live archaeologist. I've never met one before and such an unusual career choice. Was it a choice or was it forced upon me by, <laughs> by poverty? Um, no, it, 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 it's a great job. It, it's, I can't do, I'm too old to do anything else at this stage. And it combines, I suppose, working outdoors and quite a lot of research. So I'm not somebody who has to wear a suit and, and work in an office every day. My, my workplace is on building sites, it's on islands off the west coast, it's in the National Library. When you uncover an artefact during a dig, how exciting is that moment in time? Well, it depends on the artefact. Um, <laughs> Very true. If it's um, of significance. Well, if I can just show you an artefact we actually uncovered yesterday. Is that, can I do that? Yes, I'd love to see it. Okay. Um, this is made out of rubber. It's actually a rubber bullet from the, uh, from the 1970s. It's a bullet? It's a bullet. It was used in crowd control. So if you can imagine that hitting you with a muzzle velocity of 130 miles an hour. As far as we know, the Irish Army never actually used them for crowd control. But it's just one of the artefacts we find, I suppose, that tells a story, that tells us something about, about our country. But Frank, you mentioned there that bullet is from the 1970s. How do you qualify that something is of archaeological interest? Is it history as in yesterday, last year, 100 years ago? Well, that's a, that's a good question because on one level, if you're a licensed archaeologist, everything you actually find belongs to the state. So to a certain extent, you're supposed to collect everything. So if you take this find, for example, this is a little perfume bottle and that's from a psychiatric hospital where we excavated a couple of years ago. And what's interesting about that is it's its context. At some stage around, I think, 1890, the patients were working in a garden and they had to dig a series of pits for planting. And at the very, very bottom of one of these pits, somebody had actually placed this. So it's a very personal object. It presumably belonged to a patient in the hospital. So in a way, this artifact has its own story. And the reason it was retained was because of that story, where it was found, and because it's pretty much intact. I'm really interested to find out what this is, because I would walk past this in a field, on a beach, and ignore it. But you think it's of historical significance? This is a very significant object. It's, it's stone, and um, if you look, you can see that there's a, it's broken, um, but there's a cross inscribed on the stone and there are two circles and I don't know if you can get that but in the very very centre you've got a compass point. These days in folklore this is called a cursing stone so if you didn't like somebody you know you turn it a couple of times and you think about them and something bad would happen to them. In this case this is actually from a, an island called Inner Shark off the coast of Connemara and we were excavating um, the remains of a 19th century house. But this stone was actually placed very carefully in the foundation trench of the house. So we think it was probably put there as a, as a good luck charm. So this probably dates from the 8th or 9th century and it dates from the time of St. Leo's Monastery on the island. Are these items priceless or worthless? The stone, for example? In terms of what you would get for it on eBay? Yes. <laughs> I haven't a clue. I really don't know. Um, um, apparently you'll get apparently you'll get a tenner for this on eBay. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, Not surprised. <laughs> but every artifact tells a story, and really, as archaeologists, we, we try to tell stories, and we can do that through artifacts, or we can do that through sites, through buildings, through structures. Yeah.